In the last few lessons, we had a look at the hardware platforms on the NetApp website. In this lesson, I'm going to start using photos so you can get a better look and feel of the physical attributes of the different chassis. I'll also show you the different ports on the back of the controllers. So let's start with the 2500 series. That comes in three different models, the 2520, 2552 and 2554. The 2520 and 2552 come in a 2U chassis and we can buy that either with a single controller or with two controllers. If we have two controllers, then we get the high availability. In the chassis for the those first two, it comes with two redundant power supplies. On the 2540, it's in a larger 4U chassis. It again can come with either a single or with two controllers for high availability. And the 2554 has got four power supplies. The PCMs, the processor control modules, so the actual controllers that fit in the chassis are very similar. Actually, for the 2552 and 2554, they're identical. The difference on the 2520 is these parts in the middle here. On the 2520, they are 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. So they support our NAS protocols of NFS and SIFs and our SAN protocol of iSCSI, but we can't run Fiber Channel or FCOE on the 2520 platform. On the 2552 and the 2554, those four ports in the middle are UTA ports, stands for Unified Target Adapter. Our UTA ports can be configured as either 10 gigabit Ethernet ports, which includes support for fiber channel over Ethernet, or we can configure them as fiber channel ports. Ethernet and fiber channel are different all the way down to layer one in the OSI stack. So you need to put in the correct transceiver. You either put in an Ethernet transceiver or a fiber channel transceiver. You also need to configure wherever you're going to run that as fiber channel or Ethernet as well. So the UTA cards that supports NFS and SIFs for NAS and iSCSI for SAN and it also supports fiber channel and fiber channel over Ethernet are other two SAN protocols. Looking at the other parts on the back of the 2500, starting on the left, we've got two SAS ports that are used for connectivity to our optional external disk shelves. Then we've got those four ports, which were 10 gigabit Ethernet on the 2520 and UTA ports on the 2552 and 2554. The next part along, which is marked as IOIOI, is our console port. So our console port, we, we hook up a, a console cable to that so it doesn't use IP connectivity. We can use that for the initial setup of the system and also for out of band management traffic. The console port is for management traffic only. Underneath the console port, we've got a USB port, which is not currently in use, but it might be enabled in future versions. And then the next part along from there is our management port. That is an Ethernet port that is dedicated for management traffic. Under there, we have our ACP port, which stands for Alternate Control Path. That's an Ethernet port. And along with our SAS ports, that is used to connect to our external disk shelves. What this is for is that SAS traffic, we've got a data plane and a control plane. The data plane traffic is the, the traffic for the data that is going to and from our clients. The control plane is for control traffic going like commands going from our controller down to the shelves. Now on the SAS ports, you can run both the, the data and the control plane traffic over those SAS cables. 
but it's recommended to split it into the data plane traffic going over the SAS ports and the control plane traffic going over the ACP port. So the ACP connection, it's optional, but it's highly recommended that you do cable it up. Um, when you do have the ACP cabled, that gives us some ad additional troubleshooting capability, but it's not available if we don't have it cabled up. Moving on from the ACP port, finally, we have two single gigabit Ethernet ports on the right hand side. Again, they can be used for connectivity to our clients, so for our NFS, SIFs and iSCSI protocols.